Mashallah, comrades. I've missed you greatly. It's been a long time and a lot has happened. My entire kitchen broke after this big shelf lost a seven year long fight with gravity while I was cooking. I have been single for five weeks and have officially gone through the six stages of grief. You know, binge drinking, bench pressing, listening to Three Days Grace, the kitchen chaos, I made an abstract painting, and finally, I've reached acceptance. Today, I'm going to present you with the chronicles of my experience with the apocalyptic survival city building game, Frostpunk. Let me set the stage. Earth has been ravaged by a new ice age. Humanity has been decimated, only a fraction of people survived, and time is not on their side. As the ruler of the last city on Earth, I lead a small group of people on their journey to start a new civilization in a new land. The refugees, or as they're called in this game, people from London. We'll start with bare scraps, a generator and minimal resources. In the beginning, it's a struggle to even keep the generator running and build enough tents for our people to survive the cold nights. But if we manage to effectively build an infrastructure of both a city and society that can withstand the entropy of our climate, eventually we'll grow, research new technology, build automatons, send out scouting teams to scavenge the world, and hopefully manage both the hope and discontent of our people. Drastic times call for drastic measures, and every decision comes with a cost. Every 18 hours I can pass a new law. If we make child labor legal, hope will fall and discontent will rise, but we will have a more diverse workforce. If people are extremely discontent, it's always a possibility to legalize prostitution. Sadly, that will make our people lose hope. To give them back hope, we could perfectly heat all their homes and keep them fed and healthy, but then we'd be spending too many workers in infirmaries and way too many food rations. So instead it's probably more efficient to make a totalitarian religious empire, silence anyone that questions my word, employ propaganda and unquestionable faith, then sacrifice the well-being of our citizens to achieve the survival of humanity. In fact, that's how I played the game on my first run right until my citizens revolted six hours in and steamed me to death. Perhaps I was too harsh a dictator. I had to throw in the towel and admit, all right, I'm having a good time here. This is fucking gameplay. Welcome to Frostpunk, the last city on earth. At its core, Frostpunk is a resource management game. Everything's a resource, from coal, wood, steel and steam cores to people and food. You constantly have to balance the entire structure of your city against the falling hope and rising discontent of your people. Add in drastically deterring weather, storms that'll disable entire parts of your city, children dying because I put them on overtime work in the coal mine, and entire factions that'll rise to revolt against me if they're not dealt with appropriately. And you can see why I feel the need to have mandatory amputations, sawdust in the food to make it more filling, and public executions. When your people aren't at their job, resting, praying, eating, being treated in a medical facility, burying a dead body, or being lamented for their sins, that means they're idle. And you always want to have some workers on hand so your next construction can begin immediately. The colder a home or workplace is, the bigger the chances of falling ill are. If it's very cold, the workers can become gravely ill, and if it's freezing, they might require an amputation. But the warmer you want these places to be, the more coal you'll need, and the more heating technology you'll need to research. And you gotta fucking understand that I have priorities, and these robots need building. I gotta automize this shit efficiently. Yes, perhaps little Timmy died, leaving his only parent alone in the world, but you gotta crack a few eggs to make a fucking omelet. Frostpunk's atmosphere is dystopian and apocalyptic. The sound design and music for this game is outstanding and some of the best I've heard in any game full stop. These things work extremely well to immerse you when playing the game. Look, I didn't add the music or do anything else but zoom in on this clip. Check this out. Honestly, Frostpunk is surprisingly satisfying once you get the hang of it. I love when I've spent hours building my city and now everything is sorta of working for a while and I could just take a moment to watch the city running. It's at these moments that I thought to myself, oh, I should praise this game on YouTube. This game is great. But then there's the rat bastard bullshit. Like how extremely unoptimized this game is. I have a 1080 Ti, and when I reach somewhat late game city, my FPS rarely goes above 10. For some reason, this game just eats up all the VRAM on my GPU. And I don't know what it means, but my processor's water cooling block turns pink whenever I've been playing for a couple hours. Whatever it is, it can't be healthy. There's so much cool shit you can do in this game. 
Once you get a factory and research prosthetics, you can actually make prosthetics for citizens who have had amputations and make them functional workers again. So there's a late game incentive to keeping people alive, even if those bastards are taking up space and resources. There's both a book of laws route for adaption and purpose. For purpose, you have to choose one of two foundational principles. Will your vision of the future be built on order and discipline or faith and spiritual strength? Neighborhood watch or houses of prayer? Propaganda centers and pledges of loyalty? Or temples and public penance? Guard stations and patrols? Or shrines and field kitchens? Prisons and forceful persuasion? Or faith keepers and righteous denunciations? It took me a solid 10 to 15 hours on Frostpunk to really understand the extensive mechanics of the game and how they interact. It's very interesting to mess around with different structures of law and technology and how it affects your society. Frostpunk has a main story mode, three different scenarios or challenges if you will, and an endless mode with four different maps. If you're not a fucking wet wipe, you play the challenges on survival and endless mode on endurance. I started by completing the main story. It took me multiple attempts and several YouTube guides. But once I conquered the storm, I then moved on to the immigrant scenario, where you're building the last city on earth but you have to deal with constant waves of immigrants flooding your city, which disrupts both the social structure of your society and also the balance and resources. Some of the groups of immigrants were the previous upper class lords who ruled over the people who have now built a new world. I'd say this is easily the most interesting scenario they put in the game. They forced you to make a lot of difficult ethical choices. Once I'd completed these two and gotten very solid at the game, I decided I wanted to try playing on the largest, hardest scale possible. So it was time for endless mode endurance on the biggest map in the game. This is the story of the last city on earth. The tragic tale of the rise and fall of Funky Town. In my first attempt on endless mode endurance, a storm disabled all steam core buildings, which at the time meant every single resource for me. We ran out of coal and my people banished me from the city to die alone in the cold. On my second attempt, I overcompensated by working my people to the bone. This led to the incapacitation of my workforce and the eventual gruesome death of starvation for every adult in the city. I was then viciously murdered by the now parentless children. On my third run, however, I knew exactly what I was doing. Streamlined ain't even the word for it. This was fucking optimal. I utilized emergency shifts to the extreme, pushing the discontent of my people as far as I could. Some people had to die on 24 hour work shifts. That's just how it is. And yes, others fell ill because they didn't have a house for the first couple of days. But setting up the infrastructure for resources is really where it's at. I knew exactly which route to take developing technology. Faster gathering, resource mining, then a beacon to send out scouting teams. It's essential that we find people in Steam cores so we can expand. I focused on preserving life as much as I could. Not for the betterment of humanity, but because people are a resource and I need as many fucking workers as I can get. I knew exactly how far I could push this shit without my people dying. I made sure there was always space in a warm infirmary or care house, so even the gravely ill were at least kept alive, be it in great pain on the brink of death, even if that meant they had to sleep on the floor eating food filled with sawdust. At this point, I've mastered heat zones. I perfectly structure my city around steam hubs, knowing they don't overlap. I know exactly how warm I need to keep my workplaces to keep them running and prevent people getting gravely ill. I am at this point perfectly managing every resource and thinking three steps ahead. When I've got very few sick people, I turn off the heat to preserve coal. Their suffering will further Funky Town. The ends justifies the means, and I promise we're gonna have a fucking happy ending, okay? I make sure to have multiple options for resources, some that rely on steam core buildings like coal mines, others that don't. I maximize the use of the generator's overdrive during storms to efficiently keep my people safe, even without the proper insulation and heating. Little by little, the city grows. We started with 50, now we're over 200 people strong. You might assume that I'd go down the path of order and discipline, but no. I see the intrinsic values in faith and spiritual strength. Evening prayers, sermons and ceremonial services are phenomenal at raising hope and lowering discontent. Field kitchens increase the heat level of nearby workplaces. In fact, I managed to structure a functional society so hopeful that I don't need to sign the final law of new faith, which gives me totalitarian leadership, but forces us to kill the non-believers. Those people are a resource too. I mean, those people don't deserve to die. The ends justifies the means. Funky town must prosper. I'm telling you guys, happy ending. It's day 65. 
Funky Town is now officially self-sustaining, producing more resources than we could ever possibly need. We're about 300 people, all of whom live in perfectly isolated homes and work regular shifts in adequately heated workplaces. Our discontent is literally null. Citizens of our great nation no longer fall gravely ill. The only form of death that ever occurs anymore is suicide. Although our people naturally understand that all these peculiar suicides are actually offerings to a higher power. These individuals were so hopeful that they decided to make the ultimate sacrifice. Nothing more, nothing less. It's day 92 in Funky Town. For each day that passes, we get one less frame per second. I grew bored of this dead fucking terrible game hours ago. Once you've built a city to be perfectly self-sustaining, there's quite literally nothing left for you to do. As the dictator of a world with no problems, I find myself sinking deeper and deeper into a hole of cynicism, apathy, and nihilism. At this point, the storm is a mere inconvenience. We have enough resources to complete the main story three times over. God, they could have done so much more with this game, think about it. Now I've made one entirely self-sustaining city. What if they pulled some spore shit? Let me build a generator and send out a new team to a new location and build another city. Perhaps I could even build multiple self-sustaining cities and explore a bigger world. Meet other cities and set up resource outposts. Then I'd have to manage people on a nationwide scale. Perhaps eventually figure out what the hell is wrong with Earth's climate and try to counteract it on a large scale or something. That would have been really, really fucking cool. But instead, I'm just sat here playing the game at 8x speed, simply waiting for my scouting teams to reach the next location. But you know me, I don't quit while I'm ahead. I keep going. It's day 102 in Funky Town. Our frame rate literally matches the IQ required to play the game at this stage. Frostpunk has zero replay value once you've completed the main story and challenges. This gaming experience is akin to sitting on razor wire watching paint dry. Out of pure boredom I finished building the city, and we're nearing the cap of around 700 people. Once you get that many, your scouting teams stop finding new people. This... this is literally meaningless. As the dictator, I know I'm loved by my people for ushering them into a new age of peace and prosperity, but I can feel the dark voices in my head starting to take control of my conscious mind. I fear that there are dark days ahead. I promised humanity a happy ending. But I fear that the person I'm becoming has a twisted idea of what would make him happy. <laughs> Today, today's a good day. <sighs> I ordered everyone to dismantle their own homes. Everything else I've done up to this point has led them to trust me blindly. They believe that I know what's best for our world. <laughs> Watch as these fools tear down the only shelter they have for negligible amounts of wood and steel. Ah, this is a good day. I spoke into his eyes, I thought you died. Generator to pray. I left and shook his hand. Made my way back home. I searched for a fallen land. For years and years I roamed. I gazed and gazed. He stared at all the millions here. We must have died alone.
Oh, right. Yeah. Um, happy ending. I fixed my kitchen. Your face, two face.